<laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Corn's laughing at me because I said I did a countdown until we press record, but I accidentally just did a countdown until I hung up on him. <laughs> I ended the call as opposed to hitting the record button. I was expecting to go live, and then it was like three, two, one, and then it was just like gone. <laughs> yeah, how was your call? It's um, <laughs> it's always such like a terrible feeling when I hit it, and then you go away, and I'm like, oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> when do I? I feel like I've done that before for certain things where, uh, it's so clearly I'm gonna do something, but then I do the exact opposite, and then I'm I just like, you're by yourself, and you're like, that was dumb. I'm amazed at how often my body goes into autopilot mode with stuff. Yeah. And then, you know what You know what I do like crazy? I'm the type of dude where if I got to get something out of a room, mm -hmm. like let's say I got to get three things. I walk into the room, I'll get one, and then I'll walk back, and then I go back again, and I get the second thing, and then I go back, and then I go back again and get the second thing. And the third thing, I mean. You get the second thing again? <laughs> I get the second thing twice. No, you but I really, I like, I don't think, and then I just start, act. I just do, but I'm not acting rationally, so I'm like making it overcomplicated for no reason. At least you remember what the hell you're going to the room for. Like, there will be times where I'll go to the room trying to get something, and I'm like, I have no idea why the fuck I'm in here. No, that happens to me too sometimes. Oh, okay, good. I'll be like, oh, I gotta get this, this, and this, and then I go into the room, and I'm like, I don't even remember why I came in here. Yep. I've started texting... Like, Molly, certain things, like, if I'm going to the supermarket, I'll be like, I gotta, like, I'll just randomly text her, like, bar of soap, and she's like, question mark? I'm just like, nah, I'll just remember it when I go to Walmart, because I can't remember what the fuck I go to the supermarket for. Oh, so you text her to remind you? Yeah, yeah, so I'll, like, have a list of things, and I'll just text it to her so I can go back in the thread and see, like, but she's, like, on this whole organic kick, and literally everything that I'm using now, I'm starting to switch, like, to... Um, like organic, so like bar of soap. Except what you're eating right this second. Yeah, true. I this mean, like is... outside of the, like that, this is gonna take a while to like switch <laughs> over. This could be organic. It's fucking pure sugar, dog. Yeah, but I mean, like sugar is organic, probably. It's from like a farm. Like I don't know what does organic mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look up. <laughs> right? Like I mean, like. I, I feel like, and we've spoke about this before, but those candies <laughs> have on the wrappers, like, non-fat and, like, all this shit. But in reality, like, still terrible for you. But... Organic definition. Yeah. Let's, Let's look this up. Let's fall into it. Relating to or derived from living matter. Produced or involving production with the without the use of chemical, fertilizers, pesticides, or other artificial ingredients. Our shit is definitely not organic. <laughs> Well, sugar. That, that's like Come nothing but, that's got like nothing but like artificial stuff in it. Yeah, it's probably true. It's got wheat. Other than it's, like. This has modified potato in it. Really? How is there a modified potato in this? Airhead? I have no idea. But I was going to say, it's funny because you always used to eat these. And then now I eat these more than you do. I don't like that is like that's something new. I think Molly picked that up for me a couple weeks back. She stopped at like this place called Mars Cheese Castle. If you're ever in Wisconsin, stop there. It's dope. Um, and we had a whole gummy section. She picked those up for me, but I wasn't a fan of that mix because there's just there's good shit in there. I'm here's my thing about mixed um bags, and this is chips. This is like the shit that's on the bar. Call it mixed because it's their way of just pawning off some extra shit, too. So it's like, we're going to give you something banging. We know you're going to like, like some pretzels. Oh, so but it's like a conspiracy. A hundred percent. So, like, that bag has some banging shit in it, but then, like, they'll throw the Coca-Cola in there. That's this one right here. Sell. Yeah, they can't sell that by itself in its own bag. So they'll they'll make a mixed bag. It's like the, um, I love the, I think Ch Cheetos makes it, but it's, um... It's uh, it's like the little sun sun kit. Um, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, sun. What are those chips? Sun the, chips. Um, sun chips. Sun chips. Sun chips. They'll do sun chips, Cheetos, and like pretzels, but then they'll throw something nasty in that shit too, which like you don't really fuck with too hard. What's the other thing they throw in there? It's like a multi-grain bagel chip. Oh, you know, that's Chex right. Does. They do do that. You're right. Chex Mix does like the little bagel chip. They'll do the pretzels, which are banging, but then they'll put that little, um, 
like um they do like doritos with it too they do doritos but chex mix also does like that like uh it's like a pretzel rod it's like a wonton rod Mm -hmm. you know it's like a fishing pole but like it's got little curves in it Mm -hmm. i don't know what that's called just type in Chex Mix. See what comes yeah, up. Yeah, type in Chex Mix, and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like it's like it's about like an inch big, and it's sort of like like tannish looking, and it looks like a baseball bat. Oh, like a sesame. Um, Some shit, right? Like, like a, I don't know what it ever is. It's like a little sesame crisp thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's sesame though. But here's my point: they couldn't sell that shit by itself if they put that in a bag. And was just like, here are the sesame shits that you eat in the Chex Mix. People so, be like, I don't, I don't fuck with those. Why so your you your conspiracy is that they got the leftovers sitting at the factory, and it's like we got to pump these out. So let's put a mix, and you got to mix it with the banging stuff. Hundred percent. I mean, like that's the main goal of mix is to like pawn off a third part party item that like. I never thought about that before. Yeah, it's like if you're going on like um, if you got a girlfriend, you're trying to like pawn off or something like that. There's always, like, two dope chicks, but then they're like, we got to bring the third chick. You're like, all right, fine, you could still come bowling, but, like, <laughs> it was just you and her. I don't know if we could do this, but, like, <laughs> you got two dope chicks, you could bring the whack chick. I mean, it's, <laughs> people don't talk about that a lot, but this arguably is better than what you're eating because they know that this shit is so banging that people are going to buy it, and it's only one. You're saying on its time. own, they're going to buy it. But I have that, to say. There's a couple items where I was like, I don't I don't like these. But I have to say, I, I got to pull a hard disagree, though, because I like all these things. Even the Coke one that you don't like. But they put like a, there's like a ring in there. It's like a random. That's like, this one. Little, I'm holding it right now. Yeah. Is that? It doesn't even fit on my finger. I tried. <laughs> You're supposed to eat it. <laughs> oh, but if they're giving you a ring, it's like a bugle. Do you not put it on your finger? I could fit on my pinky. Yeah, I think I think well, I did the same thing. I think I tried everything. I'm like a pimp. Kiss, kiss the ring, bitch. I'm like I a pimp see, with this. I never seen Goodfellas, but I think that's what it's from, right? And You've never you say, seen like, Goodfellas? No. There's mad like like classic shit you haven't seen. Yeah, Goodfellas is one of them. And you've I never seen watch it. You've never seen Star Wars either. Yeah. I get thrown off when there's like multiples because then it's like I'm gonna go down a rabbit hole. And if I watch one and I gotta watch two, and, and there's like seven good fellas. Yeah, but not for nothing, you might enjoy it. Like, actually, Star Wars, I don't know if you'll enjoy, but you'll no. enjoy most shit that's classic. And by the way, I wasn't a fan of those either because it was like these. They had like a fake like. It's tough because what do you? How do you eat that? Do you bite the, the whole, whole thing shit? With them. Oh, really? And it's so good. I think I bit it halfway and then split it with my tongue. Pause. <laughs> No, I like this because honestly, most of this stuff to me, even the Coca Cola one, mm-hmm. it tastes like um, it just tastes like a gummy bear to me. Like all of them taste like gummy bears, but they're thicker and they're bigger. Mm-hmm. So you're just eating like a larger gummy bear, which is just you can't. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. That's amazingly delicious. I guess so. You know what's crazy? I feel like I'm sort of a germaphobe with certain things, so I'm taking my daughter to gymnastics class, and like it's at this gym and. Every time there's like these certain little um, things she jumps into, and there's always like a random spider, and I'm so like creeped out by that shit. Is it like a ball pit? Not a ball pit, but it's like it's like under the bar. Mm-hmm. There's like this circle thing, and you can't go in it. You got to walk around it, and there's always like a spider in there. There's a daddy long legs one time. That's so creepy. It, yeah, it's creepy, and it's just like grimy. But then I was thinking about like those little bowls on the bar. At like a random ass bar, and I would totally dig in and eat those shits. Wait, you lost me a little bit. What at a bar exactly? Like the bowls of like pretzels and little like just tchotchkes they put on the bar to like. Yeah, but you home. you think it's like grimy and in, in the little dish thing? Hell yeah! Imagine how many people are putting their hands in there that just took a piss and they're rubbing their crotch and scratching their ass at the bar. And touching their beer bottle and then putting their hand in that pretzel thing. So you're saying like the community thing of like. Of, like, bar nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's probably so disgusting. That's a good point. It's sort of cool that they put that out, though, because, I mean, like... Yeah, but I'm when... also a fan of gas stations putting out the leave a penny, and sometimes there's a quarter in there. I'm like, I don't need a penny, but that quarter is looking mighty fine. <laughs> when, 
Um, fuck, what was I going to say? I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, what, the only what, time you eat from that thing at the bar, like a community, like, nuts or pretzels or whatever they got in there, is when you're so hungry that you don't even care that it's probably grimy. That's true. Like, you're never not just, reaching in there unless you're super hungry. Yeah, but sometimes it's also just, like, a good, like, a uh, little, like, like, tick to just grab that, you know, something to do at the bar is, like, instead of just standing there, like, looking around well most bars don't even have that shit out that's like an old school like thing old, it is an old school thing yeah. i was just thinking mad respect to any bar that's still putting out like bar nuts pause yeah like bar nuts and pretzels and stuff like that and like a little like um one of those little brown wing bowls mm, yep but a little I'm thing like school. that goes a long way man 100 percent, 100 percent. but shout out to the bars that have the late night um like the late night food menus? Yeah, late night kitchen till like 12 o'clock at night. That used to be our... Remember at Mickey's Plains? Mm-hmm. We, would, we would crush... It was the waffle fries, right? Like mm-hmm. the cheese waffle fries? Disco fries with like... It had like gravy on them, cheese on them. If people think we eat bad now, if we were like vlogging back then when we used to go to the bar at like 12, 12.30 at night, mm-hmm. like we don't have the regular food left. We only got the late night menu. Like the waffle fries would be covered in cheese... Just the whole shit. The whole shit. You wouldn't like get a single waffle fry without cheese. And then we would drown that shit in ketchup. It and was then good, though. get something else after that. They had a good late night menu. They but had the they, slider, I think. But that's what I was going to say is that, like, there's nothing better than a menu that limits it for you. Like, mm-hmm. more choice is not always a good thing. Like, mm-hmm. if they hit you with, like, here are the six solid options, but this is all you can pick from is the six... Mm-hmm. That's plenty. Six is a lot if you think about it. 100%. We're just used to menus that have like 40 things on it. Mm-hmm. But that gets confusing because sometimes then, then you're like, man, there's like three different things I want equally on this menu. But if you get hit with the list of six solid things. All different. And it just it just pops to you immediately like that's yeah. what I want right now. That's what the menu always used to do. And like it would cater to however you were feeling. It would be like, here's your chicken shit. But it's only one chicken shit you can get. Here's like a three burger thing if you if you're feeling burgers. Not a full burger, but we're gonna hit you with three little sliders that are banging. You don't want that? Just get some cheese waffle fries. You want cheese waffle fries? We can hit you with wings. Mm-hmm. And it was every little thing and you'd be like, I want that today. And they made it so you try something like different every day of the week. Subway does a good job of that with like their uh sub of the week. I haven't had Subway in a long time. But they also they also overcomplicate it too. Like they'll have an Italian BMT. And then they'll just have like a BMT shit, and I'm like, just put one or the other on the menu. Don't make me think I'm like B- missing out on something. BMT or BLT? I think M. What's the M stand for? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's BMT. B- Unless that sounds like some like BLT is shit. bacon, lettuce, and tomato. No, but they have an Italian BMT too. Look that shit up. I think it's one of their like their what type Italian BMT. I think is BMT Subway. No, you're right. That is a thing. What is it, bacon, mayonnaise, and tomato? The sandwich features a base of spicy... Oh, bologna. Capricola, mortadella, and Genoa salami to go with your choice of cheese, condiments, veggies, and bread. The BMT. What? Subway does not even have those shits that you just mentioned. They just... It's, so it's just an Italian sub. That's what it is. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. It's an Italian sub. That we just refer to that... I just call that an things. Italian sub. Like an yeah. Italian sandwich. That's how I would refer to that. But BMT... I actually never heard that phrase before. Yeah, I'm always skeptical when I get it, but it's banging. Yeah, I mean, not for nothing, to get that specific kind of a sandwich, mm-hmm. you'd be better off going to, like, an old-school, traditional, like, Italian deli. 100%. But, however, I will also make the the um, controversial claim that a, a lot of Subway sandwiches, like, certain Subway sandwiches are pretty damn good on their own. Hell yeah. Like, yeah, but there's, like, mad, there's, like... You know, real foodies like look down on it, and they're like, they're like, no, you need to get everything from that like small business deli. You know. Well, if it's an option between like an authentic small deli and Subway, I'm going to the authentic deli every single day of the week. Like, so I wouldn't even. No, nah, but in. see, my claim is that it's not every day of the week. I'm going right. like four days. I'm going to the authentic deli, and then three days I'm going to to Subway. Really? That much? Well, yeah, because they they have some things that, like, only they do. You know what I mean? 
Not really, because the Italian shit is going to, like, they put the love and tender care behind your shit, whereas Subway is just, like, hitting you with, like, just, like, the staple. Nah, it's like, like, Subway is like the McDonald's of delis. That's what it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's the low, yeah. it's the low thing. Like, it's, yeah. but there's some and what, shit. occasionally you get to hit yourself with a Big Mac to, like, hit the reset button? Basically, you, like, that's kind of my back. argument. Like, here, here, let me, I'm going through the Subway, um whatchamacallit right now, going through the menu, and I'm going to tell you the shit that I've gotten from Subway, where, like, they, they only they do it. Okay, here you go, ready? Mm-hmm. Nobody does this but Subway. Sweet onion chicken teriyaki sandwich. Yeah, you're, you're swaying me. Sweet onion chicken, like, you can't go to an Italian deli and be like, let me get a sweet onion chicken teriyaki. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. And then the that- other thing is, chicken bacon ranch melt, man. Like, that's something I haven't had from an Italian deli before. I've had an Italian sandwich from an Italian deli. If you want to get, like, a nice chicken parm, definitely don't go to Subway. Go to the... <laughs> definitely don't go to Subway. Go to the go to the, the, um, the authentic deli. But if you want a chicken bacon ranch or you want a sweet onion chicken teriyaki, I mean, that's all, all day you got to go to Subway for that. I always like the idea of the sweet onion chicken teriyaki from Subway. And then when they pull that shit out of, like, a little index card-looking paper thing and then just plop it on the sandwich, I'm sort of like, ugh. Yeah, I've, I've had that experience where, like, I want it, and then I see them make it, and I'm like, eh. Yeah. But then you eat it, and it's like, this is banging. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. And, I, and that, see... That sauce is off the chains. The, the other thing that Subway... The reason why Subway... I like it more than a lot of people like it is because they stay true to that soft, fluffy bread... Their bread is banging. And that's the thing, like, I, and you know this, like, an old school Italian dude would be like, you need Italian bread that's, like, hard. Nah. And I'm like, exactly. My reaction's like, nah, not that's even. That's why, uh, do, you get your, do you get your bread toasted? I do get my bread toasted, but I gotta have it, like, it's gotta be a fluffy bread. It can't be that firm yeah, bread. Yeah, see, I don't toast my bread. If I do, I do lightly toasted, which is just a quick, make it a little hot. Well, that's I why, need- yeah, I lightly toast it, too. You want it so that on the outside, it's, like, a little bit crunchy, but then right when you get in, it's fluffy. Oh, oh, yeah. No, their bread is bomb. But then there was, like, an article that came out one time that they put, like, rubber tires in their bread. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sort of not even mad because that's, <laughs> like, they're... They're trying to make their shit even more bouncier than it already is. No, but that's that's the hilarious thing is that like what, that move. Remember when that movie Super Size Me came out about McDonald's, where yeah, the dude yeah. eats it like every day, and then at the end of the month he's like, "I'm basically dead, and my numbers are <laughs> off the charts. I'm like, I got all these problems." Uh, I watched that movie, and at the end of it, I was like, "Damn, I want a Big Mac." Yeah, it was a good advertisement for McDonald's, <laughs> even though the whole point was the opposite. I'm sitting there watching them eat McDonald's every day, eating Big Macs, and I'm getting hungry. I'm like, "Damn, I could really go for a Big Mac right now." I could go for a Big Mac right now too. I wonder if that guy's still alive. Oh, that dude is still alive. That dude's still doing like shows like this. Oh, really? Yeah, he did. He had a show on CNN for like a year and a half or something. But Seriously? They, yeah, they canceled it, I think, because he wasn't getting great views. Oh, Morgan they, um, Spurlock. What is it? Golden. His name is Morgan Spurlock. Oh, Morgan. He was from like some weird Iowa or some shit, right? <laughs> Let me look it up. Morgan Valentine Spurlock is an American documentary filmmaker, humorist, television producer, screenwriter, and playwright. Supersize me. Where in the world is Osama bin Laden? What? He did a movie called Where in the World is Osama bin Laden? Comic Con, r- blah, blah, blah. Mad random. Um. Okay, let's see... He is from West Virginia. All right, same thing as I originally, but now he lives in uh, New York City. Oh, he lives in New York City now. Yeah, it's kind of funny that that dude's just like walking around New York City right now. I wonder how often he gets recognized. Never, probably. I would recognize him if I saw him. Seriously? Hell yeah, I'd recognize him because he's got that distinct mustache, that like handlebar. Mustache. But like looking at his picture now, or like even before you saw this, if you saw him, you would know him. Nah, even before I saw this, I would know him. Oh wow. He's got I, a distinct like kind of like. looked him. Yeah. What was his whole thing? He would like he would only get the supersize me if they asked him. Oh, yeah, I think he'd only get the supersize if they asked him. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was that movie that led to supersize being like they, banned. They get rid of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was a law or if it was they voluntarily decided to get rid of it, but that's sort of like 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 
stick to your freaking values, McDonald's. Like, if you're going to get people obese and, like, fucking serve fat people food. I'm kind of torn on it. If it's a law, I'm not torn on it and I'm against it. But if they just voluntarily decided, then that that's okay. Because that's, I mean, they really people really are getting fat as fuck. Yeah, but that's not on McDonald's. Like, Bill Maher, like, made that argument. And it's just like, if someone wants to eat McDonald's, like, it's on them. Like, McDonald's can't be like, hey, you shouldn't be eating this, man. You're a little bit big. It, no, no, 100% it's on them. I agree with that. But it's just mad obnoxious to have a super size thing. Like, just get a regular ass size. Or if you, and if you, really, if you really want to be a fat ass, get two of the normal size. Yeah, that, you could do that too. You know what's interesting? What if, like, McDonald's... Like, if obesity is such a, like, big crisis and big problem, and, like, you know, it's, like, this big argument that, like, everyone says we need to talk about it, and it definitely is. Same thing as, like, you know, drinking alcohol or whatever. Why couldn't, like, a McDonald's employee, if, like, a OD obese person came in, ordered some shit, and were like, sorry, sir, I can't serve you? Like, same thing a nah, bartender because that's flat-out discrimination. But why can a bartender say no to a guy who looks super drunk? Because that's a that's a an immediate safety issue where if but the guy if, can have a heart attack right away if he eats one more French fry. Nah, but you, that's not that's probably not true. Like, there's no such thing as like this dude is so obese that we know if we feed him one more burger, he's gonna. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, when it comes to being drunk, you know that the dude is totally in danger. Like, bartenders only cut people off when it is so obvious that they need to stop. You know what I mean? They never yeah. cut you off when it's, like, questionable. Like, they'll let oh, you go yeah. until it's like, goddamn, you can't talk. Yeah, You know. Much. But when it comes to food, yeah, just... But imagine yeah, if they started doing that. Interesting... No, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, no, like... no. That would be terrible. Because the... <laughs> then you're taking away people's free choice, like you were talking about before. Like, I'm good with making the portion sizes smaller... But you can't make it so that, like, no, you're not allowed to get two. No, sir, you're too fat. It's like, what? That's crazy. I mean, it is. But then again, if, like, if I'm a lawyer and I'm still somewhat coherent and they try to cut me off for drinks, I'll be like, what are you doing? Like, I, I can get a drink. Like, I, Yeah, it, and then at that point, they'll probably be like, okay, that's still okay. But then it'll only it get still. only when you're, like, beyond, like, you're about to fight them. We, well, they try to throw you out. Like, yeah, this dude yeah. is all, is just out of it. I would never want to be a bartender just because, like, you get all the blame. Even if, like, they were drinking somewhere else beforehand and they came up to you and just for that one second were like, let me get a Corona. And, like, like maybe their head just swiveled, you know? And you give them that Corona and they go and crash the car or something. That's on that last bartender. Yeah, bartenders, uh, they, they do well financially in the city. They make a lot of money in the city. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, like... But they got to deal with fucking dipshits all night. They got to dip... Yeah. Molly was a bartender for a little bit, and she would say, like, people would order these crazy concoction drinks. And you got to know them all. But she wouldn't know the shits and would just, like, make up something random. Oh. Or maybe her cousin said that. Or you just asked her. You just asked them, like, what's in that? Yeah, but then it's like, they're going to hit you with some smart remark and that opens up a like conversation with them Nah, like if you're asking me to put together like a tomato double dutch you gotta tell me what the <laughs> fuck a tomato double dutch is <laughs> no if i'm ordering a tomato double dutch i want the bartender to know what that shit is or else like yeah but that's mad obnoxious don't ask unless you know what's in it like like if you if somebody if i were to order a shirley temple <laughs> pause on that <laughs> No, not even Shirley Temples are banging. Yeah, they're mad banging, but then you feel effeminate if you order a Shirley Temple. But, like, you know what's in it. They'll be like, okay, which which one do you want? Do you want the one that's, like, grenadine and, and uh, ginger ale or grenadine and Sprite? Yeah, which is, that's a that would be a good debate. I think it's ginger ale, right? It's it's either one. You could get either one as a Shirley Temple, I think. I think I've always had it with the, with the ginger ale growing up. Shirley Temple... Who was, can you, who was Shirley Temple, and how did you get that drink named after her? Oh, I think Shirley, she had red hair. That was the little actress, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Shirley Temple is a non-alcoholic mixed drink traditionally made with ginger ale and a splash of grenadine, garnished with a ma maraschino cherry. Modern Shirley Temple recipes may substitute lemon-lime soda or lemonade. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Exactly. I feel like most of my life I have had it. It's No, it's been like 50-50 in my life. Like, sometimes I'll just do the Sprite one, 
Mm-hmm. And then sometimes they'll do the ginger ale one. When I was a kid, that was my favorite drink. Oh, my God. I used to love that yeah. shit. That was the best drink ever. It was like because you felt like you were drinking at the bar. I think that also <laughs> played into it, too, is that like you, you felt like you were getting a bar drink. Yeah. It, it, you know, they shouldn't if, – if they were to like rename it something manly, I'd order that shit today. <laughs> they should. I mean, like I wonder – I wonder if like, Shirley Temple was alive for that shit to like see it take off. Like she yeah, was a, she definitely she, was. What's a Roy Rogers? <laughs> you're gonna get some weird. They're shit. gonna be like that shit is a Shirley Temple for dudes. Let's see. So it's gonna be like when you're when you're having when you're with your girlfriend and she asks you to do. Yo, this shit is delicious. A Roy Rogers is a non-alcoholic mixed drink made with cola and grenadine. It's just throwing grenadine in mad shit. I don't know if I would like that. I've never had it, but it sounds mad good. Well, remember when you told me the other day, this was so genius. I'm so happy you said it. I was like, damn, man, I'm craving an orange crush. And then I mm-hmm. said, and damn, I'm also craving some ice cream. Mm-hmm. And then you responded, tell everybody what you said. Well, I said, get an orange float or something, you right? You were like, yeah, why don't you get an orange float? Mm-hmm. And I was like, god damn, that's genius. Because I was thinking that's two birds with one stone right there. Yep. And so then I actually went to the store. I got orange crush. Or it may have been a Fanta. I don't remember which one. I think it was Fanta. Yeah. And then I mixed it. I got just regular vanilla ice cream. And then I had it. And I was like, God damn, this is even better than I thought. Yeah. That's a genius concoction. Because Every I hadn't had I a float, float since float. I was like a kid. Mm-hmm. I think root beer float was the last one I had. I'm, so I'm, you like creamsicle? Creamsicle's delicious. But I was just about to say that I'm actually, I'm not a big fan of root beer. Oh, I love root beer. I would much rather have cream soda than root beer. See, I think you're in the minority. Because, With cream soda over root beer? Yeah, because they have A&W um, like restaurant chains, whereas they don't have like a creamsicle restaurant. Yeah, so but majority, A&W, you can get anything at that, at the A&W. Yeah, but A&W is, is, is majority root beer. Yeah, but the, it's like a restaurant where you can go get a burger and fries and all that. You don't just go to get root beer. <laughs> no, some people probably just go like... Post up to get a root beer? Here's my point. There's no, like, creamsicle shit that sells other food also. Creamsicle like, is just a flavor. That's not a a, a brand, right? Cream- no, no, creamsicle is like a, like a, it could be a thing. Like, root beer. Creamsicle drink. Like, Cream- root beer was strong enough that they were like, we can turn this drink into a full restaurant. Creamsicle company. Let's see. I, didn't, I was never a fan of creamsicle for some reason. Really? It, remind, it reminds me of like those Tootsie Rolls with the cream on the inside. Nah, see, those are buns. I hate those shits. Those are whack, right? Like, yeah. Tootsie Rolls should just be the chocolate kind. I've I know nev- nah, but like, even the chocolate Tootsie Rolls were like, these are mad obnoxious and not that nah, good. You're bugging. You're bugging. Tootsie mm, Rolls are a staple, man. I'm not bugging at all. <laughs> That's like when you are when you get Halloween candy back in the day and you're going through your stuff, Tootsie Roll you leave till the very end and then you're like, fine, I'll have a Tootsie Roll. But you still eat them. There's some candies that you don't even, like, you'll give away. Yeah, Twizzlers I give away. Fuck the Twizzlers. Oh, you don't like Twizzlers? Nah. my Those used to be my sister's favorite. Which one didn't I like? I never really liked Three Musketeers. Oh, what? You're a fan? That is heresy. Three Musketeers was one of my favorite as a kid. I what is it? Sort of like a Snickers bar? It's like just caramel? nougat. It's like delicious nougat. <laughs> That's such a weird word, nougat. Yeah, it's a weird word. <laughs> I feel like I would eat them, but they would. I would always just have so many Three Musketeers in my bag, cause, and maybe they just pop more because there was that shiny silver. Yeah. But so like you, those and Milky Ways, I, I would like, they would be my last resort. You don't even like Milky Ways, bro. Oh, I like Milky Ways, I'm just saying. That's your last shit? That's not That's a last not, shit. If I'm dumping out my Halloween pillowcase... I'm not reaching for a Milky Way or Three Musketeers. For, that's not even coming close to one of my first You're grabs. You're bugging. That's, those are so good. Milky Way. That's, that's your first grab? Not that's my first, but it's definitely closer to the top of the list than the bottom. Nah. At the I bottom, I'll tell you right now. At the bottom, Whoppers. Yeah. Twizzlers. Tussie Rolls. Damn. Those are bottom for sure. Give me some more bottoms. What else you got at the bottom? Let me type in Halloween candy. What else is at the bottom? Like a, uh, um, if you have like red and orange Starburst, like those will be last. Those are like middle last to me, not last last. Middle yeah, yeah, last. No, I mean, the first thing I'm reaching for though, 
is the milk duds. I'm 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 opening up my palate with milk duds. Not for nothing. That's sort of near the bottom for me, man. Come on, man. There's only like four in the box, and they count nah, out. Milk duds. I've never been crazy, but they're good. Like here, let me let me put it this way. Milk duds blow whoppers out of the water. Hundred percent. It's like yeah, yeah. It's not even day. close. Yeah. Mm. But when I'm looking through the Halloween candy, I'm going. Oh, here's another one that's towards the bottom. And this one's interesting because it looks like it should be better than it is. Do you know what I'm about to say? Um, The chocolate M&M's? No. I was going <laughs> to say dots. Dots. Oh, dots are way towards the bottom. Yeah, but the thing is, they look... I, I See, the thing is, they always trick me because when I look at them, I'm always like, those look like they should be mad delicious. But then every yeah. time I try to eat them, I'm like, these are so whack. I feel like there's also some other gummy shit that's colorful that looks good. Jujubees? <laughs> Jujubees, that's right. That's towards the Those bottom, are colorful, man. right? Yeah, but it looks like it's you should want it, and then you you just don't. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Jujubees. But my problem is I'll always give it a chance. I'm always like, well, maybe this time the dots are good. And then I take right. one bite, and I'm like, this shit is so hard and not good. It's like a jelly, and they try, like, those are the ones that sort of look like the, um, like Mr. Pac-Man. Which dots? Yeah, dots. It's sort of, it's sort of like the like the top hat in yeah, Monopoly, mm-hmm. right? Yep, that's right. Yeah, those are so trash. And then they're like, it's like they try to make a banging gummy bear, froze those shits halfway, covered it in sugar, and we're just like, yeah, this is our product. It's like they took a gummy bear and and seeped out all the good flavor of it. That's what they but did it, there. But it has that weird like sugar coating on it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, no, I don't, I don't know if it's got sugar. I don't know what I'd call it. It's just, it's just like gummy candy that's not good, and it should be. It's just, <laughs> it's always stale. It tastes oh, like it's stale to me all the time. They should. Uh, that should be the name of it. It's just gummy candy that's supposed to be good, but it's actually <laughs> back as fuck. <laughs> so when I when I open my Halloween candy, I'm going. It depends on what mood I'm in. If I'm in the mood for some gummy shit, or if I'm in the mood for some chocolatey shit, mm-hmm. but. There's always, like, a very good chance Reese's is at the top and Kit Kats are at the top. Like, I will very likely go for a Reese's or a Kit Kat first. I'll also go for, if I'm in a, in, a, in a sour mood, I'll go for, like, Sour Patch Kids first. That's a staple. I'm always mm-hmm. good with that. Eve Airheads I'll go for quickly. Swedish Fish I'll go for quickly. Like I'm the, about to hit you with some shit that's on the bottom. Go ahead. Smarties. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got full agreement oh, on that one. on the bottom. Yeah, on the bottom for sure. That that's re- yeah, oh candy corn is the worst. Don't even oh, get me st- the absolute worst. Yeah, nobody even likes it. I don't even know how they still exist. Yeah, I, I just feel like those are like like candy corn is like the Joe Biden of candy, <laughs> where it's just there. It's, it's just, just always there. <laughs> they keep trying to do shit to like fuck up. Like they'll they'll just throw them in your in their bag from their hand. <laughs> And you'll be like, oh, that was disgusting. Why would they just throw candy <laughs> corns in my in my pillowcase from their dirty yeah, ass like, hand? Why is it that all other candies got like some wrapping and then candy corn is just you got some old dude, 73 years old, his name is Roy, and dude just throws that shit as he's coughing with his with his smoker's cough and his thick ass glasses. And he's like, I got you some candy corn. Or if it's not in his if, if it's not in his hand, they like went out of their way to separate the candy corn into like their own little plastic bag. Which is always sketchy as fuck. Hell yeah, because you know they're like, they're tampering like the candy corn. They bought a big ass like 80 pound bag Mm -hmm. and are like dividing it up themselves. So is it, let let me ask you this. When somebody buys candy corn or they buy Smarties, okay, and this is part of their shit, Mm -hmm. did they get that only because it was part of of a mix and that was in there? Or, just, uh, yeah. or did they get like just the bag of candy corn and it was mad cheap because nobody likes it and they were like, I'll just buy this shit. I think candy corn, I don't know if this is the right word, is an anomaly. It's its own thing. That is a word, by the way. So like they sell that in a 20 pound bag. So people just buy that to be festive. Really? Yeah. And I think the Smarties come mixed in with some other shit. So it'd be like... Snickers, Milky Way, Three Musketeers, and we got to hit you with Smarties. Sorry, we got to get rid of these somehow. Like the company still exists, so they're going to be in your mix pack. <laughs> but the thing about candy corn, the kids never eat it, but it's always that Joe Biden shit where the parents will be like, oh, throw me the candy corns. <laughs> That's so like, true. You're going to eat these? 
and then they'll just sit on the couch while you eat your candy and filter through it, and they just eat the whole candy corns. My dad was big on Almond Joys, which aren't bad, mm-hmm. and Good and Plenty's, which are terrible. My mother-in-law loves Good and Plenty. That's that old school. That's like in the, cool. in the same way that when you go to grandma's house, she's got butterscotch in a little dish off to the side. Yep. That's that's how much of a guarantee it is that yep. you got a parent who's like, Good and Plenty's my favorite candy. Yep. Yep. I'm going to hit you with some other shit, too, that for some reason, if you could buy stock in this company, if they're a publicly traded company, <laughs> this shit is still doing well. I don't know how. Peeps. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Those shits I are don't so- like them. Yeah, they're mad trash. But they're always... That like they're always festive. The company seems to be always updating their shit. Like they'll have like a fucking NBA edition peeps, and you're just yeah, like, you like still making shit. Wait, I'm about to throw a curveball at you real quick. Peeps for like collector shit, I could fuck with that, but I can't fuck with it to eat. So just like buying, like if you if they came out tomorrow with like we got a Bernie Sanders peep, I'd be like I'm copping. <laughs> so it would just have to be one big ass peep. Yeah, it'd have to be, or maybe they do like a mix of like, we got Bernie Sanders presidential and presidential candidates. Yeah, presidential candidates. That would actually, that's actually a genius idea. That's what I'm saying. One of, a, a basketball all time great. They got an MJ, a LeBron, a Kobe. Yo. That's what I'm saying. See, that would be genius, but don't ever try to get me to eat a peep because I'm not going to eat that shit. One of our listeners definitely works for peeps. Nah. That's some obscure ass shit that someone was like, I used to work there. I know somebody there. I'm going to throw them that idea. Because that's genius. All they do is like Easter, and they just make all pink little ducks. That is genius. Are. That is a genius idea. But like NBA All-Star Weekend, if you had an East, Eastern Conference lineup peeps, and like a Western Conference lineup's peeps. You could just do it with You could do it with baseball players. You could do it with NBA. You could do it with football. Everything. You could do it with everything. It's genius. Peeps would peeps would become peeps would take over the country. <laughs> it already does, and imagine what the fuck you would do. Damn. Um. I, you know what's similar to that? You remember Chia Pets? Oh hell yeah, I remember Chia Pets. They made so many different kinds of those joints. Like they made presidents. They made like Bob Ross. Chia Pets were like the thing where if you turned on the TV when you're a kid and like you wake up in the morning to go to school, like before you you know. You leave yourself like a solid 30 minutes to watch some TV and at like 7 a.m. or like 7.15 you turn on TV and you like flip through the channels and you get through like USA or TNT Mm -hmm. and they'll have like a Chia Pet commercial on and it might even be like a little infomercial. 100%. And and that's one of those things. I remember that really well. It was either super early or it'd be like like 12... 17 at night too yeah they can hit you with that but i'm thinking like legit back to the 1990s when i when I, we were kid kids mm-hmm. you know what i mean but the other thing is with this this reminded me of because i remember like the chia pet commercials yeah. but this reminded me of when i saw this commercial of there was like an answering machine that they used to sell like you know the as seen on tv things yeah, of course yeah, yeah, yeah like there was this answering machine that they used to sell where it had like songs and shit where like the instead of machine had songs, what's that? The answering machine. Had yeah, the songs? answering machines had like these preset songs that you could pick from, mm-hmm. and like, and, and it's not just the answering machine too. It was also, it was also the ring. Like when the phone rings, like you hear it, not with the ring, you hear it with a song. You know what I mean? And I remember no. I made my mom buy it when I was like, really? I had to be like ten years old. I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. You got to buy so- that. So and, if somebody called your house, it would play like it Tupac? would it w- exactly well no it w- it came with preset songs it wasn't like song oh. songs because there would be an issue with like copyright with that but True. they had their own little jingles so the one that we had it would go like this it was kind of like a rap thing but not really it would be like pick up the phone we know you're at home pick it up pick it up pick it up <laughs> I and, think I and remember that like ten year old Kyle or twelve year old Kyle was like oh, mom you gotta buy that that's so cool <laughs> and I like tortured her until she bought it. And then she bought it, and that's what we would hear every time that the phone rang. That's wild. You know what that makes me think of is like, uh, like the ringtones when you would call someone's cell phone. And I be never a ring- had a ringtone, dog. Everybody else had them but me. Yeah, and I remember I forgot who it was. Recently, not recently, maybe a couple months ago, they were talking about 
they sold like whatever 10 million downloads it might have been like t-pain or something like that just like he was one of those artists that had a song back then that was like the most popular song that everybody downloaded yeah but yeah so and so he made mad money off the ringtone od like crazy amount of money damn because they people it was like a absurd amount of money like you had to pay like 4.99 just to have your ringtone real see that's why i never had one yeah it wasn't like cheap and then they started doing like there was commercials on TV that would be like, press 8 if you want to download Nelly, it's getting hot in here is your ringtone or some shit like that. I see, I don't like, even remember that. You know what yes. I remember? I remember I remember there was one time that we skipped, skipped class to go to your place to play some new NCAA video game. Oh, hell yeah. You Those remember that? Shit. Yeah, yeah. We played um, the March Madness basketball game. What and year? Tyler Hansborough was on the um, cover. Was that 2005, 2006? Probably 2005, I would say. So, like, junior year. Junior year, I think. Because we were still driving. We were able to bounce from school. There was nothing better than that feeling when when you, you learned, like, you were able to drive, you just got your license, and then you would just, like, skip class. Yeah. And that feeling of freedom when you're out there in the world and you're like, I'm supposed to be somewhere else right now. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, even like driving away from the, like walking to your car on a nice day, knowing class was still in session, or even when school was over, just knowing that you could drive, I would get giddy for it. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to just get in the it's car. It's so drive funny home. how when that goes away, it never comes back. Yep. Now when you drive, it's just like some shit you got to do. Yeah. It's like, I got to get from here to here. I got to drive. You don't think at all, like, oh, I'm driving. No, I used to like, make cds and be looking forward to like all right usually takes me about four or five songs to get to school so i gotta have like I, I, like the shit that'll just get me right now it's like one i don't really care what's going on on my radio <laughs> unless it pisses me off like this morning we've spoken about this shit before if you laugh at some of these morning radio dj skits oh. i can't fuck with you yeah like, no nah. like like unsubscribe from our channel right now if you've ever laughed at some <laughs> fucking corny like guy prank calling somebody and saying he's like he's rick from the car dealership <laughs> and your wife is coming here and she's sleeping with me get the fuck off <laughs> like, yeah dude that's just like stuck in 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 a previous generation that kind of entertainment like nobody nobody fucks with that anymore that's they're just... still doing it though this morning i heard they're like oh. and they're so late on this they're like um they played a hot song, and I was vibing with it, and I was like, okay, yep. And then they were like, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but LeBron James tried to trademark Taco Tuesday. I was like, all right, tell us the story. It's old. We know about it already. He was like, when we get back from commercial, I think we've got a conversation with him and his agent talking about trying to trademark it. And I was just like, no, 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 no. You just played a good song. Don't come back and try and be funny. So they came back, and then he was like, Hey, agent, um, I'm thinking about maybe copywriting Taco Tuesday. And there was like some corny white person voice. And it was just like, well, you could do it. But uh, people have been saying Taco Tuesday forever. He's like, no, I want to do it. I'm LeBron James. And I was like, somebody oh, laughing at this They right pretended now? to be LeBron James. Yep. Oh, my God. What the fuck is that, dude? What There's is that? He's doing that everywhere, like pretending to be Kim Kardashian and like still pranking somebody like saying they're the flower company and they owe them money for you know what like here's what killed the prank in my mind there's two shows that killed the prank in that like that's it wrap it up you're never gonna top this okay Mm -hmm. show number one is tom green show yeah he straight killed the prank because he was like the original prankster Mm -hmm. like he had a show at a time when like being impolite or rude was not a thing in terms of being socially acceptable. He did a show where the whole point of the show was him fucking with people. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like a trailblazer in that sense where he's like, he kind of led the way for something new. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the other show, which made it so like, you're done no more is Jackass because Jackass was so, they pushed the limits so far that like, you're not going to top it. So what do you, so like the kind of prank, like you were describing that's not, not only am I not getting a laugh out of that, that's not entertaining. Whereas, like, with, with Tom Green, I was laughing, and with Jackass, I, I was entertained. Yeah. Yeah, what what are your thoughts on, like, the early seasons of Punked? 
I watched like the first two. I feel like, and I was good for like the first for like the first one. I thought it was good, and then I just didn't care anymore, and I was just watching it out of habit, and then I just stopped. That's where it's like it it it's fun. And here's my this is my thought on like viral videos too with kids and all this shit. It's fun. Like the early seasons of Punk were okay because it was actually like they were getting celebrities. They like genuinely didn't know it was happening. They didn't even know this was a show. Then people started figuring it out. So they're like, am I on Punk? You know, and it's just like uh, it sort of loses a little bit of the allure. Like they know it could be some shit. Same thing with like Impractical Jokers. But they're sort of like defying the odds a little bit because they're mad funny. I've never but watched like, that show. I know oh, you love that show. You gotta, you gotta do yourself a favor and watch. And they're all like from Staten Island. They're like New York dudes. I never, I've never seen it once. Oh, dude, you'd be shitting your pants if you watch some of these shows, man. But like, I'm telling you, like, I feel like it's dead to me because of Tom Green and Jackass. Like they, <sighs> they hit such a high level in my mind that I was like, nobody's gonna outdo this. I get, but like Tom Green. He wasn't, was he like funny doing it? Oh, it was more like, funny. Not, no, I'm not even, this isn't even a discussion talk. Like, was Tom trying Green, to be funny or was he just so like, just being like. No, it, was, it was funny because he's so ridiculous. Like, I still, to this day, I still will watch a Tom Green thing to just laugh. Like, there's this one, it's so stupid, but it's so funny. He, he pretends to be this character, Billy Bob. Mm-hmm. And he's got like his microphone and he's wearing like a flannel shirt that's like cut off of the sleeves. Mm -hmm. And he's got like he's got some big ass fake teeth. <laughs> and he's got oh, yeah, like I I know that guy. he's got caramel on his teeth and shit. And he walks he was walking around like LA or something, just to, like talking to people and being <laughs> He was just being dead ass serious. Being no, he was telling but he speaks in like the Billy Bob way where he, oh. and then he tries to get them to eat his caramel. He's like, You wanna eat my caramels? And he's like put trying to put it in their face and shit and they're like <laughs> And it's funny because, like, some people think he's, like, a person who's got serious mental issues. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. they're trying to be nice to him because they think, like, he's special needs type stuff. Yeah. And, like, then they get scared and run away because he starts acting crazy. <laughs> it, I'm telling you, like, to this day, I will go back and watch some Tom Green stuff because it was just so stupid and so ahead of its time. Like, it, it's really... The fact that that dude had, like, just... He was able to totally tune out what everybody's perception of him was and just keep mm -hmm. going with his bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I feel like I, after a minute of fucking with somebody, I just feel like I want to be like, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Whereas he just like, he just buried that deep down and was like, I'm just going to keep going forward. It's that's a hard thing to do. I mean, like I, I cringe sometimes even when, uh, they do it on like comedy, well, like old school Colbert or something used to do that, or like John Stewart's show. They'd have these politicians, like these serious politicians, on, and they would fuck with them. They would just fuck with them, and like you sort of feel bad for the politician, but then again, you're like, you're an idiot if you don't realize that he's <laughs> fucking with you right now, which exactly. makes it even funnier. Exactly, hundred percent. But I, I'll, well, I'm gonna recommend everybody. Tom Green still has his old school show like clips on YouTube, a bunch of them. Just mm -hmm. type it in one night. Oh, there was another one that had me laughing so much, man. I'm not sure I've ever laughed this hard in my life. When he he was he went into a suit. See, it's also fucked up too, but like it's still funny even though it's super fucked up. You know how like those scooters that like people who are incapacitated roll around on or like really old people or whatever. go around on? Yeah, big ass like scooter where you sit down and you could just drive it. <laughs> he drove one of those into a grocery store. And he was wearing, like, I think some blind glasses. <laughs> <laughs> he just started straight knocking over shelves and shit. I think I'd seen that, too. And then they were, like, trying to chase him out of the store. And he was, like, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> and then at one point he was talking about his wife. He's like, I just want to get my wife. I just want to get my wife. And they were escorting him out. He goes, like, out one side and turns around and goes right back in the other side. <laughs> I might have to rewatch that one. I'm, I'm telling you, it was fucking hilarious. I... I when I first saw that, I'm not sure I've ever laughed that hard in my life. Oh, yeah, that was. There's yeah, two, I, I remember watching that. Two things that I laughed so hard at, it, like I, I almost like almost had to go to the hospital because I stopped breathing. Was that Tom Green skit when I was a kid? Mm -hmm. I, I might not react exactly the same now, but like it was still it was so funny. And then also the first comedy stand up I ever saw when I was a kid, which was Kevin James sweat the small stuff. Oh, was that funny? And like, well, here's the thing: when you're a kid. When you're like a like a naive little kid and you watch it, mm -hmm. it hits the perfect wavelength. Like it hit the perfect wavelength for me where it was like it was comedy, but it wasn't comedy that would go over my head. You know what I mean? And it was mm -hmm. funny, but it was also innocent so that a kid could digest it all. 
So it was, it, it, I just laughed so hard. I remember me and my sister just laughing so hard. I feel like that's why people like Dane Cook so much, because it was like relatable stuff, and it Dane was Cook. funny at a time where you were like in a, in the zone to laugh. I have to say that for Dane Cook, there was always a little bit of an element of like, reel it in a little bit, in my mind. I know that a lot of people fucked like with Dane him. Cook. A lot of people fucked with him, but when he first came out, I always felt like, and this happens too, man. I love Joey D- Diaz to to my bones, but mm-hmm. sometimes that dude with his stand up, it's hit you so hard and he's so fast and loud with it that part of me I'm like, All right, reel it in a little bit, bro, reel it in a little yeah. bit. You know what I'm saying? Like that that style of comedy, it's hard for me to digest the really energetic style. You know what I mean? The only person who really pulled off energetic where I liked it was George Carlin. But even with Carlin, it wasn't just that I was laughing, it was more that he was intelligent and making good points. Like, there's some comedians that make you just laugh, and mm-hmm. then there's other comedians that make you think, and then there's some that make you laugh and think. And I feel like with Bill Hicks and George Carlin, it was a lot more of the latter. It was a lot more of like, oh, you're really smart, and you're making good points. And like, at sometimes I laugh, but it's more like I'm actually getting something out of what you're saying. Yeah, true. Do you think it works with Bernie Sanders because it's like he's actually talking about something that matters, whereas comedy, it's more of like a joke? Cause like he could sort oh the of loudness like, I don't could... even but that, I never thought of Bernie as loud I mean I know he is loud mm-hmm. but he never struck me as loud it's interesting because if you're if you're saying things that are powerful enough mm-hmm. you could rep anything and the perfect example of that is Noam Chomsky Noam Chomsky literally makes monotone sound good mm-hmm. like the you know Ben Stein the old school Ben Stein yeah, thing gonna, like, well, clear yeah. eyes moisturize clear eyes. <laughs> like he's just like half dead and yeah. but noam chomsky is he's so monotone and he never his inflection never changes his cadence is just like dead flat line mm-hmm. but he reps it because he's saying things that are important so you could yeah. follow along with what he's saying you know mm-hmm. yeah i guess uh, yeah i guess i don't yeah sometimes joey diaz will fluctuate or something like that when there, and dane cook did a lot of yelling and the thing I about know, I, I, thing about Joey is his podcast is the best because yeah. he's so he's the best storyteller of all time. He's the best storyteller and like the new thing now is just like I mean like I think if you come up, if you have a reputation of just being outlandish and like not afraid of anything, you could say whatever the hell you want. I think he put a video of like a guy getting like his like dick up something like that on Twitter. He said he said this has to be a Fugazi tape. Oh, he, oh! He said it was like he fake? said it's got to be a fake. He was saying it's got to be a fake tape. But he still like posted it, and then like he uh, he uh, it was nine eleven, and like they were playing the national anthem or God Bless America or something on his air. Did you see this? No. Oh, you got to watch it. And he he's sitting there with like Bert and the other guy. I don't know who does his show, and they're playing like the um the like the background like national anthem, and he's just yelling over. He's like. Like, F the terrorist. And he's just, like, yelling every single, like, derogatory thing to, like, Muslims and, like, everyone associated with 9-11. And Bert's just cracking up. And, like, he's just going off. And he's like, this is America. If you're going to come here and do this shit. And it's just, like, that's what he establishes himself as. It's, like, just no holds, like, say whatever you want. Whereas, like, the guy who just got kicked off of SNL. Yeah, he can't. He could he hadn't established himself like that, so he can't he get away with it. Himself with that shit. It's so the like, same thing with like South Park. South Park, they're just able to get away with whatever they want to get away with because they're South Park. Yeah. Like once you hit a certain point, you people can only get outraged at you a certain number of times before they just tap out because they know they're not gonna. They tried to do that with Chappelle. Chappelle just had his new stand up that he released. Yep, yep, yep. And people were writing articles like, "Oh my God, you know, you said this, this, and this," and he just doesn't give a fuck. You can't. <laughs> Like, you can't, it doesn't matter what you say, because he doesn't give a fuck. You're not going to change his next stand-up, sp- whatever he wants to say in his next stand-up special, no matter what topic he's going to hit, he's going to hit it, regardless of what you exactly. write in, like, a dumb blog. Bill Burr did that, too. I was watching the, I haven't finished his stand-up yet, the new Paper Tiger one. Mm-hmm. I've seen I it. I listened to, like, the first 25, 30 minutes, and there was some that I was even, like, like he's pushing it, but, like, he doesn't care. He was going in on like well, women and the whole Me Too movement and and Michelle Obama. For me, it's just got to be the only time where I I wince and I'm like this is dumb, is if like they're doing it for the sake of trying to get that outraged reaction. Because mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. I think it's dumb. 
Yeah. But if they're doing it as in if they're real, like this is really, like he means it and this is his shit and he's not trying to get a reaction. It's just one of those things where if you happen to dislike it, well, that's tough. You know yeah. what I mean? Then I'm cool with it. And definitely in the case of the Chappelle stand-up, he wasn't, he wasn't looking for an outraged reaction. He was yeah. just saying like, hey man, like he had done a joke about transgenderism the last time mm-hmm. and then people got mad at him. And so he addressed the topic again because he's like, people were mad at me. (laughs) And so he told another story about it. And again, people got mad, but like, he doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck because he wasn't doing it trying to piss you off. It was just a side effect that some people might be pissed off. Yeah. 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 And it's also, we can like, you could relate it back. Like the stuff they're talking about is real too. Like there's real sides of what they're saying. So like, while it sounds fucked up, there's like some truth to it. So it's like, they're not like, like you said, they're not just saying it with no backing and they're just trying to be funny. Like they genuinely think they like, they believe in what they're saying. And, and you make it so that like all of comedy culture is going to want to talk about the stuff that you don't want them to talk about Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. that reason too. I feel like there's always going to be a drift in the direction of like, what am I not supposed to say? Well, let me explore that. You know what I mean? In the same way that like, you know, when when evangelical Christianity was like really ascendant in this country, there was so much comedy that was like poking fun at it. Like go mm-hmm. look at Carlin's stuff when he was younger, and like you know just poking fun at like a puritanical culture. Like when he did it, all these words you can't say. I forget. I don't even know how many there are, but there's like yeah. certain number of words you're not allowed to say on TV, and he would say them. You know, and it's like whatever those things are that you kind of declare off limits. Those are the exact things they're going to explore. Because and those are usually the funniest things too. Yeah, because as an entertainer, where do you go as an entertainer? You're gonna want to go to the things that are gonna evoke the most reaction. Mm -hmm. Because or else, like you're so used to hearing regular people say regular things at your job, in your little cubicle, your coworkers, they're gonna say normal things to you about normal stuff. The, you know? the stuff you hear all the time. It's the stuff you don't. Yeah. Hear all so the time. when you're going, like, if your job is to stand up in front of 300 people and like try to get a laugh out of them, you're gonna want to go to territory where it's like really questionable. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're gonna nail it, and other times you're gonna go too far. Mm-hmm. You know. And so that's it. Like the thing with the SNL dude, it's like, do you not understand that they're for almost probably every comedian, there's questionable stuff they tried. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they're comedians, they're gonna try. I mean, he did say. If you read it on paper, it looks fucked up what he said. Uh huh. But I didn't even see what he said. It was something I about Oriental people, right? He said something. He used. He said chink. Oh, okay. But I don't yeah. know because that's the thing is, and a lot of comedians have pointed this out. And Bill Barr did in his special, and that was a really funny line, and it made me laugh. I didn't get to that part yet. He was talking about, um, like, if you write it down, that doesn't give the context because the context is everything. And, oh, I, and it, yeah, it was I in the Me Too shit. He's like, <laughs> he's like, when you read it out in the court transcript, it's like, no, stop, no, what are you doing? And then he's like, but that could have sounded like, no, stop, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Like, that's a yeah. totally different thing. That's not yeah. the same thing. So yeah, I forgot what I was originally saying, but that the guy said it sounded different than no, no, it. yeah, I didn't hear it. I only saw it written down, and written uh-huh. down, I was like. Uh-huh. You fucked up, <laughs> but you know it could have been a totally different context where he thought it was funny and he thought it was gonna land, and then just double down, man. I th- I think about like Roseanne. But that's like, why she, she should have the balls to double down no, on her shit. But that's why you people. It's hard for people who work where they have a boss because there's always gonna be kowtowing to the outrage mob. Always, yeah. always. It's funny people have tried to do that shit. Like, they'll dig up some old shit I said and be like, see? And I'm like, bitch, I don't have a boss. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you want me to do, fire myself? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's so funny. I've seen it before where people try to make a big deal out of like, oh, you said this. And I'm like, and? <laughs> like, first of all, I've addressed anything that could be misconstrued or viewed negatively. I've already addressed everything. Second of all... There, nothing is going to come from you being upset at me because I don't have a boss. And so, like everybody knows you and like, or like you got to know the person before you just make like an allegation against them. Uh, like granted, sexual assault or whatever is different. But like if they said something fucked up, 
You got to look at the context. You got to look at the time period. You got to look at the age. Like, there's so much more that goes into it than just a quick tweet. Like, that's it. You're done. You're racist. Get the fuck out of here. It's like, no, man. There's like, there's more to everything. And, and guess you know? what? Guess what? In today's day and age, every single person who's participating in the like, ah, oh, this fuck this person, whatever, some bitch, shit. some shit will come back on you. You're just 100%. lucky nobody cares enough yet to dig into your shit. Hundred percent. Because it's happened yeah. man times already. Somebody will t- partake in this like super outrage thing, and then next thing you know, somebody digs up some questionable shit they said, <laughs> and then it's like, ah, oh, well now can we try forgiveness? Well, exactly. That's the point. <laughs> you oh. know, th- that's the point. Is you shouldn't really give a shit anyway. You know, like digging up because somebody said something. Like think of all the things there are to care about in this world, man. There's so much stuff to care about. Mm-hmm. Like fucking, we're waging eight different wars right this second we got climate change which is just ruining everything and forget Mm -hmm. what would life be like for our great grandkids you know what i mean you got that you got extreme poverty all around the world there's so much going on that needs like serious addressing and then what somebody wants to be like online all day reading old tweets of people and being like aha (laughs) like oh wow congratulations sherlock holmes seven hours and i found one (laughs) yeah exactly the f word it's just so dumb yeah, it is, but, I mean, that's what it is, but I got caught, and speaking of end of world shit, I got caught, there was a tornado warning. Oh, I like, saw that, yeah. My you were... actual house. So you said the thunderstorms were crazy? The thunderstorms weren't that crazy, but it just looked dark and gloomy outside, and then we had the news on, it like interrupted whatever show was on TV, and like the weatherman was making it OD, he was like, it was like, it felt like the end of the world, he was like, if you're in these areas... Get to shelter now. And I'm like, yo, what? And like all the areas around where I live and where I live was on his screen. And whatever the fuck was behind his shoulder was like red, orange, yellow, like map. And it had like numbers on it and shit that did not look good. And I was like, <laughs> all right. So here's here's the the question. And we should actually pull this. Let's, let me pull this up right now. I'm, I'll, I'll tweet it right now. Mm-hmm. Um. If you had to get caught in one natural disaster. That's a if, good one. If you had to get caught in one natural disaster. What are our options? So our options are. Tornado. Hurricane. Yeah. What category should we do? Category. Four, I think, is pretty diesel. Four is. Fucking oh, you're done Fuck zone your four? shit up. Like, that shit will blow your house down, dog. For real? But no, I feel like people survive four. That happens People to Florida, survive right? four, but category four will fucking wreck your house. All right, fine. Do three. Is three bad enough for your house to survive and you just have some damage? Three that could like, knock your house down, too. Three could knock three? your house down, too. I feel like two doesn't sound that strong No, two for, doesn't. For, people would for. definitely pick. I'll just put hurricane and leave the category out, okay? Hurricane, tornado. I think three is good hurricane. Hurricane three... Hurricane, or like Category 3 Hurricane? <laughs> no, I'm just going to put Hurricane, Tornado, Earthquake, and then give me one more. What other natural disaster is there? Getting attacked by Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> Getting your dick sucked by Louis Anderson. <laughs> um, the, the bubonic plague. <laughs> what other natural um, disasters are there? Why am I blanking on this? There's Hurricane, there's Tornado, there's Earthquake. What about Freezing. That's not a natural disaster. No? Natural disasters. Flood? That's hurricane? Yeah, but that's yeah, that's part of a hurricane. Dinosaurs natural disaster. Back. Well, they do say flood separately. Flood, earthquake, hurricane. Here, let's see if we can get a comprehensive list. What are the types of natural disasters? Okay, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, wildfires. Wildfires we're going with. Yeah, that's... I think that's a low key. People don't think about that, but when you see like those <laughs> California joints, there's no such thing as like a natural disaster that's okay. Like every one of them is fucking terrifying. You really know what I mean? Bad. Yeah, I don't even know what I would vote for on that list. So what is that? Which one would you want to? What, what's, if what's you question? had to get caught in one natural disaster, so the least bad of these, basically. I think I would go uh, hurricane. I'm tweeting this. Earthquake just sounds scary. I've never earthquake been is one. scary as a motherfucker, dog. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to. What if you're, what if you're, at the earthquake spot where like the shit separates? 
what if uh, you're at the earthquake spot where it separates? Well, that's the fault. That's the same. I know, like, what if you're in the fault zone? I don't know. I I think that's more like in movies where you see a thing actually like open, like, like splitting. Yeah, it's more like the ground just shakes underneath you. Really? But, but there are earthquakes that can literally like separate streets and shit. Yeah, like knock buildings down, all that. I feel like it separates streets too. I feel like it happened in like the I Philippines. Mean, maybe or some it does, shit. but that's a very that doesn't that's not the thing that gets most people. It would yeah, just it's be just the like shaking and structures all structures collapsing yeah. on you is a more common thing. Yeah. Okay, so if you had to get caught in one natural disaster, we did hurricane, tornado, earthquake, wildfire. I think hurricane blows that shit out of the water. No well, pun if if that's the case, then maybe I should have put a, a like category four or something like that. Yeah, because hurricane like doesn't sound too bad looking mm, at it. You said like the, category four. No, nah, but see, here's the thing: if you're actually in in a hurricane, that shit is bad. Like it, the thing that's not bad is like. Oh, there's a hurricane warning. Oh my God, is it coming this way? Oh, look, it just skirted sure. us, and we only like, got like a little yeah. bit of an outer ring. And people think like, "Oh, I survived a hurricane." Bitch, that wasn't a hurricane. No, it wasn't a hurricane. Footage, go talk to fucking show, Puerto Rico. What it's like when they got hit with Maria, Category Five. Go or talk like to the, the Bahamas, Saint Martin, or some shit. When they have the cameras there, and the fucking cars are just whipping, and it is fucking terrifying. Yeah, and and actually, of all those, I've experienced. None of them. The only one I've experienced is Hurricane Sandy. And Hurricane Sandy, by the time it hit where I am, it was just mm-hmm. tropical storm strength. And even that knocked out the power for a week. Yeah. A week. Yeah. And it was just a tropical storm by the time it hit us. Wasn't a. That means the shit that knocked out the power for a week wasn't even a, a Category 1 hurricane. Yeah, that's crazy. So think about what a two would be like, or a three, or a four, or a five. Yeah, I can't. Oh, man. Alabama could tell us what that shit is like. Alabama could. Yeah, they've been hit with hurricanes. Oh, that was Trump Sharpie. You remember? Uh, he but they have Alabama. been hit with hurricanes, but not that one, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I just don't think it doesn't look as bad as the other shits on, on a pole, is what I'm saying. Hurricane. Yeah, but that's peop- but that people are is... failing to actually think through it, if that's the case. That's a good point. I you think wildfires I mean? come across as that, too. Because you're just like, oh, those shits are far away from us in a forest. It might not affect me. But, bitch, look, that shit fucking burned down madhouses. Wildfires are no joke because they literally are wild and they could, like, pop up. If the wind changes direction and it's coming right at you, you are fucked. Like, you got to move, 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 move once those things start coming towards you. Hell yeah. There are videos I, of people. Like, have you seen the videos of, like, the people trying to get out? And they're surrounded by fire everywhere, and they're no. driving on a road. And like, there was this video that went viral, oh, that. Yeah, yeah. and this girl was crying because she's trying to drive out. She doesn't see any end to it. She sees to the right of her and to the left of her, you got the fire, and she's on this road, and she doesn't know if she's going to get out of it or when she's going to get out of it. Jesus. Yeah, it's fucking terrifying. Mother yeah. Nature can fuck all of us up. That might be worse than, like, you think of the movie Twister or, like, these people who go tornado chasing— they drive right next to the tornado, you know? But this is, but the, the thing is, and this all hinges on how people interpret this poll, mm-hmm. but like, what exactly are we talking about? Are we talking about, like, there's a tornado that hits in your town, but it doesn't hit you? Or are we talking about, like, no, a tornado went right over your fucking house? You know what I mean? Like, there's, yeah, yeah. it all depends on how they think of it. An earthquake. Okay, are we talking about a little little earthquake, a little fucking three point something on the Richter? Oh, we're going the extreme on. Or are everything. we talking about like that Japanese shit, which fucking leveled the whole city? And then there was a. Fu- Have you seen that video of the tsunami? Oh, this video. I, like the first time I watched it, I almost had a panic attack because what, what, what? there was an earthquake that hit right, uh-huh. and then mm. you got this seawall, and then so you have like a road, you have a whole city over here. You mm-hmm. got a seawall, and the earthquake hit, and then it looks, after it looks like everything's peaceful, and then you see this fucking tidal wave come in, and it goes it goes over the seawall, and like immediately engulfs the road and everything in the city, and you're, all you could think of when you're watching the video is, holy shit, there I were people, watch that right away. there were people like on the road and shit, and the first level of these houses, here, let me, I'll tell you what to type in if you want to see it. 
and they thought they were good, and then just that shit just came and fucking swarmed. Wow. Japanese was... tsunami seawall. Let's see. Let me see. Drone Best. video of... No, 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 that's not it. 10 meter seawall breached by tsunami. Let me see if is I can that find it? it. No, I'm, let me, I'll tell you the exact video. I, this is it. Okay. Oh, boy, this is it. This is going to fucking... Yep, <laughs> here it is. Me? Okay, here's what it's called. Uh-huh. Um, type in tsunami, comma, Japan 2011. And then the video that pops up on YouTube will be... It'll say, stabilized, and then it says, tsunami, comma, Japan 2011, water crashes over seawall. Oh, I see rare video tsunami National Geographic. 2011. Show me. Look. Point, hold it up t- for me. I don't know. That's not it. Damn um. It. Here, I'll, I'll actually I just I'll, let action. me just. I'll just send it to you on Twitter and DMs. Oh, I think I see it. Tsunami. Ju- I, oh, that might be it. God, that I'm does just, not look good. I'm just sending it to you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, man, that's scary. And like. No, 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 no. This is like the most terrifying thing in human history. Here, I just sent it to you. And um, I feel like a lot of this stuff is just happening more and more. I just sent it to you now. And I'll tell you what time to fast forward to. I didn't get that shit yet. I just DM'd it. Oh. um, That tornado thing was um, pretty fucking scary. Oh, yeah, I think I saw it. Let me see this. Sorry. Okay, so what you need to do is just skip forward. skip forward to 546. Because that's when it re- everything really starts coming in. And then, oh. All right, 530. Yeah, just watch from there, and you'll see. Damn. All right, so it's still just calm. Just, just wait for it. Just wait for it. You'll oh, it's building up. Never see anything like this. I mean, this is just like, it's insane. It's insane. Wow, the water's just like flowing over. All the people just had no idea what was about to hit them, dude. They had no idea. You couldn't even see that coming. You couldn't see that coming. You had, you just oh, couldn't see it coming. My gosh. Oh my gosh. That's not good. For everybody listening right now, it's stabilized, S-T-A-B-A-L-I-Z-E-D, Tsunami Japan 2011. And it yeah, should be the first Should be the first video that comes up with that. Oh, my gosh. It makes me think, like, during that tornado warning, like, the guy's saying take shelter, and we're still in our living room watching it, not knowing when to go take shelter. But, like, what if that instant, shit hit your house? Yeah, what if it just hit my house right then? That's what I'm saying is like that's people, people don't, that's the thing about mother nature is people don't realize like, no, 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 you're only existing by the grace of mother nature letting you exist. Yeah. Cause we could just be whatever. The, there's so many things that could just take us out. We're so fragile, bro. We're well, that's so what fragile. We're just floating in like outer space. What if all of a sudden, whatever makes us float. The world stops spinning for a yeah, split like, second. That's doesn't it. doesn't work. And we just, or a like, comet. A comet asteroid could just hit us. Comet asteroid or just we start free falling in space. Like what if we're like an elevator right now that loses its chute? Have you ever, have you ever heard of the, the um, what's it called? Tunguska explosion? No. <laughs> Dude. I don't want to see it. Is it just the earth like exploding? Okay. No, the Tunguska. It's called the Tunguska event. Okay. Mm-hmm. I recommend everybody, you know, there, if you type in Tunguska event to YouTube, you could find like a documentary on it or something. But mm-hmm. basically what happened was um, in like, what year was it? Like the 1930s maybe it was? There was something that happened in Siberia. Now for people who don't know what Siberia is, that's like this giant, giant, giant area of I think Russia. Is mm-hmm. it part of Russia? Whatever, I don't know. I don't know. It's around in that area, and it's like barren and nobody lives there, okay? Mm-hmm. It's just really cold and just a whole bunch of trees, and it's just giant area, okay? In the middle of Siberia, and people lucked out because it was in the middle of Siberia, there was this, like, asteroid that hit the Earth there, okay? 
it had the power of let me see how many nuclear explosions it la 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 leveled the area with the force of something we've never ever seen before yeah and we just lucked out that that wasn't like over a city or something it was just happened to be in siberia um (sighs) tunguska explosion that was a while ago, right? Because there's footage of like some straight, like I don't know if it was in Russia or Poland or something of like a meteor or something hitting over. That was nothing. Spark. That little nothing one compared to that shit, right? Nothing. Okay, ready here. Uh, apparently, an expert argued that what happened in Tunguska is the equivalent to 1,000 Hiroshima bombs going off at once. Wow, 1,000. Again, we just got lucky that it happened to hit in the middle of a barren area where nothing is. And trees were not... You know how? You know what it looks like after like a tornado hits like a wooded area? And you got yeah. the trees... Like this shit was the trees all bent away from the shit for like hundreds of miles. <laughs> that's nuts, dude. If that hit like New York City or something like that? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. People don't realize, man. We're all like... That's weird. Fucking life is so precious because it's yeah. just we're so weak. We're all so feeble. Oh man! Yeah, think about how easy it is. Like think about how easy it is for a person to die. It's so yeah. easy. Yeah, we're just these like fleshy water balloons. <laughs> like if you jump from three stories up, it's a wrap. Like we're yeah. just so weak. We're so feeble. Fuck yeah! I mean that's scary to think. I mean it's only a matter of time before a meteor hits or something really. It's gonna happen, man. These like these storms are happening too often and too they're become like I've never f- had to worry about a tornado warning before. And granted, yeah, I live in the Midwest, but like yeah, that but shit I thought I didn't think you, like yeah, I didn't think you were in Tornado Alley though. No, I didn't think so either. And like it was scary, man. Like the dude was on the news saying take shelter and like you know if it's gonna get bad and if you're in these areas, I would whatever. So did one not even hit? Did a tornado not even hit anywhere? I think they saw it in the air. It might have not hit ground or some shit, but coming to think of it, they sort of did all that for nothing because nothing <laughs> really See, happened. That's, there's a catch-22, though, with disaster warnings because you need to tell everybody if something might be about to happen, yeah. but then if something doesn't happen, then it became like the boy who cried wolf because the next yep. time they try to say some shit, you don't leave. Like, There's going to come a time when a Category 5 does hit Florida smack dab in the center. Like, there will come a time when, like, West Palm Beach gets leveled with a Category 5 fucking hurricane. But yep. since they already, like, busted their load three times where they told them, you gotta get out, it's gonna be a direct hit, and then that shit was nothing but 30 mile an hour winds. People are gonna be posted up. People are gonna pool. be posted up, just chilling, and their shit is gonna get fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it's true. They're not gonna board their walls up. Supermarkets are still, like, people have their theories that they do that shit, so you go to the supermarket and buy more and do all this shit, which... And that's some Rush Limbaugh stupid shit. Is it? I mean, yeah, it's like, stupid as fuck. They obviously feel like, no, this shit is... I mean, that... When you looked at the map and when you looked at the um, the modelings, like the computer modelings of what's like supposed to happen with it, it was supposed shit, yeah. to hit the middle of Florida. Yeah. But what happened was, for whatever reason, that shit parked right over the Bahamas and stayed there for yeah. like 24 hours straight. It was just pummeling the Bahamas. For more than that, I feel like that shit was there for days. Like, they were like, this hurricane's going to hit. And I was like, what's up with the hurricane? They are like, still, still just over the, still over the, the Bahamas. Bahamas. Chilling. The whole they shit. They got a margarita posted up right now. The whole shit. Just, the Bahamas was just utterly obliterated. It's that so shit terrible. Is crazy. But you know it what? Is. I tweeted about this at the time. What happens now if every year the Category 5 hits somewhere? Like, last time it was Puerto Rico. This time it was the Bahamas. Next time it'll be Cuba. Next time it'll be fucking Trinidad and Tobago. You know, it, like, just keep... Where the fuck is Trinidad and Tobago? Is that even in the area? Somewhere. Tr- I mean, it hit, like, St. Martin, St. Thomas, or one of those islands. Trinidad and Tobago on a one map. DR would get hit. Let's see where Trinidad and Tobago is. Where's Trinidad and Tobago? No, it is. It's, uh, it's, it's around there? Yeah, it's, like, it's just above South America, but it's one of the islands over there. Okay. So I'm not I'm not too far off, but I don't know I don't know if that gets hit technically with hurricanes. No, it's probably not in the alley. They all come from that like it's crazy. area. It's crazy how some shit like you certain areas just repeatedly get hit with certain things. Like, Imagine being on a boat like in the eye of that shit. Oh, oh, like like the middle of the ocean, like because 
when they're monitoring that storm, there's somewhere like Bahamas took the grunt of it, but before the Bahamas, like when that shit was at its peak. No, I it, it, it looks like on the water. It peaked on the Bahamas, but I hear oh, you. Really? Like it could have been like when it was a category four going to the Bahamas yeah. if you're out there in the shit. But like it was somewhere. Like being O D. It always starts off the coast of Africa and then comes towards us. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing in Africa, but chill out for a second, man. <laughs> Stop sending us those shits. My brother-in-law was telling me there's this thing, the Canary Islands, just off of Africa, but uh -huh. it's technically part of Spain. And it's got like 70 degree weather all the time, all year round, just beautiful. And they don't get shit there. Like, that's just like the perfect little spot. Like, you know how there's little spots? Like, you could live Hawaii's in... Hawaii's like that. Hawaii gets nothing? Well, Hawaii, I feel like, is the perfect place. Like, they don't... I think... Like until might, until that shit blows up again, because it's, it's basically a volcano that exploded. Yes. Imagine, like, the volcano is still active and we don't know it, and some day after tomorrow shit happens, and... it's Anything could happen at any point, man. It's scary to think... I, I still think about, like, the fucking Bermuda Triangle, like... <laughs> that I remember watching, like, History Channel things about that, where... But, that's, but see, that's the thing, is you don't know which things that they play are just total bullshit. Because yeah. they'll play, like, ancient aliens nonsense, you know? I, I have my theories on aliens and on Bigfoot and all this shit. It's just like, if we haven't seen any of that shit now, and you gotta like come up with a fucking runaround case for me to believe that there's aliens and all this shit, there's no fucking aliens. There's no Bigfoot. But here's the counter argument to that. You ready? Of the thousands of like sightings where people mm -hmm. say they saw it, mm -hmm. only one of them has to be real for it to for there to be aliens. But there's no proof. There's never been proof. So yeah. it's like, how come we haven't seen one fucking alien? Like, yeah. I, at least I can get behind the Bermuda Triangle, because maybe a plane crashed there one time. <laughs> that, that's like, not, there's I nothing special about it, then. Alien. And every person who said they saw an alien, it's all some, like, I couldn't really tell you about it, but my fucking car window's fucked up. <laughs> And you're like, come on, man, you're going to want me to believe that. <laughs> no, that's but true. I remember the argument I just made, by the way, was an argument that uh, when I was in college, this kid did a presentation and he was all in on aliens being real. And that's the argument he used. He was like, of all the thousands of sightings, if only one of them is real, then aliens are real. That's such a bad fucking theory. I mean, it's not bad for what he's working with. He's trying to, he's working with the idea that there's fucking extraterrestrial beings that come here and like <laughs> fuck with us and like. The funny thing is, like, if they exist, all they did is just dip in for, like, seven seconds and then dip out. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, that's not how shit works. Like, if you, if there's actual connection being made, they're gonna, they're gonna be like, what's good? They're not exactly. gonna, they're not gonna, like, like, randomly park in the sky and chill for seven seconds. Someone will get a picture of them or some shit, or they're all this, like, fucking surveillance, no one's the got one, a picture. The one that I, the one that I was like, why are they doing this, was the, they, they did one on CNN, like, two years ago, I feel like. With an experienced fighter pilot, and he saw a UFO, and then they showed the video, and I was like, why is it, today is the day of fucking HD 4K cameras, and you got some grainy ass shit from like 1978, and I'm supposed to be like, that's it, there's proof, mm -hmm. now there's fucking aliens. <laughs> that's, there's been nothing, like nothing, so I don't want to hear any, like when Joe Rogan tries to talk to this dude. <laughs> I just saw that, the Dan Aykroyd. Well, yeah, Ackroyd, but he had the other guy from Area 51 oh, or whatever. Oh, the Lazar dude. Yeah, who's like, who's like, he said he was convincing. Yeah, and I, this, I saw that. that. I saw that. I watched his Netflix. Did you watch his Netflix documentary? Nope, didn't even watch that shit. Not interested. I watched that shit. And... Not even interested. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't believe it. <laughs> you can't sell me on it because I, there's no shit. Like, there, you, all you'd have to do is start his documentary and hold up a picture and be like, this is what I saw. But he can't. He's got to give you a fucking wraparound run around everything of like well what if he showed you a picture you'd be like that shit is fake as fuck probably <laughs> <laughs> probably but like yeah i couldn't even listen i couldn't get through the dan Aykroyd thing man he all he did was just fucking it's talk, funny talk, that that dude that dude used to be an actor right and then now all he is yeah. is like this fucking alien hunter well he was like a i mean a very famous actor and on snl comedian and like i mean dan Aykroyd's huge was in ghostbusters but like, all he just kept doing was fucking rambling Yeah, I fucking, I couldn't, I caught on, I couldn't listen to it's him. It's funny, like, Joe is hilarious, because he'll have on people to talk about, like, shit like that, and then yeah. he always does, like, he always, 
he'll always be like somewhat skeptical, but then also give you their side too. Where he's oh, like, nice. but if that shit is real. <laughs> Well, he was like, he was trying to convince him on one thing, and Aykroyd was like, well, yeah, there was the alien semen or whatever like that. And Joel was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? Tell me about the alien semen. He's like, alien was busting nuts all over the place, bro. This shit is, uh... Yeah, it gets me mad fucking thinking about that shit. But like like I said, if there was, like, if a plane crashed over a Bermuda Triangle, or, I mean, there's a big-ass meteor, like, that shit is some realistic shit, because we've seen it before. But yeah. I never see some fucking flying sauce. Like I don't want to see a grainy image in the sky of some shit that. Could yeah, the grainy a- image thing is like, come on, man! Don't even show me if it's not going to be something that looks like super definitive. Exactly. Don't and even just- show me unless it's like, I mean, but what would it take for me to actually believe in them? Is an interesting question because I can see myself calling bullshit until it's so overwhelming. You know what I mean? Like it would have to be so overwhelming for me to be like, yeah, because it's become so. There's such, like, a bullshit industry around it where people make the bullshittery of it the main point. You know what I mean? Like, there are people who yeah. are obviously bullshitters who who act like, yeah, bro, this is real. So, like, what would it take for me to actually believe it? Because it's already tainted by so much nonsense. Yeah, I guess so. It's like someone shooting, like, a thousand basketball shots and that kid making the argument. Well, it's like, well, he shot a thousand of them, so one of them had to have gone in. Yeah. And you're like, no, he could have missed a thousand of them. Like, that's realistic. Yeah, but that's just possible. Like, there's so many cases of people saying they saw aliens that someone's just like, you got to believe one of those stories, right? Have you ever had a uh, any sort of weird experience where you were like, that was bizarre? Mm. Not that I could think of. And if it happened, I would just be like, "That well, that was fucking weird. That's so, exa- like- so that happened with me, and that was my reaction, too. It yeah, was like, actually somewhat was- recently. It was in, what? like, the past year. You want to hear what the happened? story? Yeah, yeah, what happened? So, it's I was at uh, I was hitting golf balls at the mm-hmm. driving range. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was me and one other dude at the thing. And he was, like, all the way, maybe, like, 150 feet away on the other side of the range. And this particular driving range is kind of, like, right over the path of, a, of where planes fly. Mm-hmm. And, um... So, every, like, I want to say every, like, 10 minutes, a plane lands and goes, like, kind of right over it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, so, it's kind of, like, in between the planes, and so, like, five minutes had passed since the plane went by, and I'm hitting golf shots, and all of a sudden I hear, I don't even know how to describe what it was, but it was, like, this is the best I could do to describe it. It sounded like... A plane was zigzagging through the sky instantaneously, where, like, it sounded like a plane was, like, over there, and then over there, and then over there, and then over there, and then back over there, and then back over there, and the sound was very, like, loud, and it sounded like an engine soaring through the air, but it Mm -hmm. was, like, super quickly way apart from each other. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It was just, like, really, like, and it was all over. And so, I, like, paused, and I think I heard it before the guy over there did. Mm -hmm. I paused, and I was like, like, the first thing you do is look up and look around, and you're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And then that dude paused, like, eight seconds after I paused, and he looked at me, and he was like, aliens? (laughs) And I was like, that's, that, I was like, yeah, aliens, dog. But that's what that's what happened. It was like the only way to describe it is it was like a weird loud engine sound that was everywhere at once, but it was very distinctly everywhere. Like it wasn't like you can't yeah. hit me with like nah that shit was just over here, but you thought it was nah that it was everywhere. It was like there was like a thing over here, over there, over there and over there and it was just zigzagging back and forth. Um but the, here's what makes it less exciting for people. Mm-hmm. is it happened again to a lesser degree when I had gone back like a little while later. And I think my conclusion is that that's just, there's like a reverberating effect to engine noise when you're in the path of jets oh, landing. Like, oh, okay. I think that there's like a reverberating 
weird, almost like an echo that like travels around type stuff. That would make sense. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the most logical explanation. But it was just a weird noise that. One hundred percent. It's fun to entertain the idea the first time you heard it of like. Because it sounded like there could have been some stealth fucking flying saucer just flying everywhere like a thousand miles an hour over your head, but obviously it's that, not that. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're practical. Yeah. Where you're just like, you, you put two and two together where you're like, all right, here's a Air Force or a airport and... Dan Aykroyd like, would have been like, that shit is aliens. Exactly. Immediately. And then he runs with his story. And he would have told it in a much more, you know, glorious way than I just told it. Joe Rogan put it best. I think he was like when he was doing that show, like whatever show he did was like trying to get conspiracies. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I sort of came to the conclusion that all the people looking for this were just white men who can't get laid. <laughs> and that's what fucking Dan Aykroyd is. He's probably just a white <laughs> old dude who can't get laid, so now he just beats off to UFO conspiracies. It is funny that that became like the centerpiece of his existence. Yeah, like you don't find a hood black dude like like yo. <laughs> Was that a UFO? Because he's like, no. I got four different girls on the phone right now that I could call. He doesn't have time to worry about that shit. <laughs> oh, that's fucking hilarious. All right. On that note, <laughs> you got anything else you want to say? Um, No, I think we're good. All right. I'm fucking tired. All right, guys. We love you. Yeah, don't go to fucking Japan in 2011. You'll be in... <laughs> <laughs> that video is terrifying, man. That is very terrifying. I'm sure everybody just watched it, but it is fucking scary. Yeah. Did anyway, it, uh, when's the poll results done? Oh, thank you. I knew we were missing something. <laughs> I knew we were missing something. All right, here, let me pull it up right now. Let's see what one. Would you set it for just like a quick banger? I did an hour, but we'll. I guarantee you, whatever the trend is now, that will be the trend by the end because we're halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the answer. If you had to get caught in one natural disaster. 48% say earthquake, and they win by a mile. Earthquake wins. Earthquake wins. Hurricane is second with 28%. Wow. Tornado is 19%. And then wildfire is 5%. Wow. So basically, wildfire is um is the last one people want to get caught in, followed by tornado, and then hurricane. And earthquake is the one that people, if they had to pick one, they would pick earthquake. Presumably because they're thinking of like a little earthquake and not like a fucking... The major shit. Yeah, not the San Andreas shit like The Rock was in. <laughs> That's one of those uh, movies, though. Good movie, even though it's a bad movie. <laughs> I should check that one out. I should watch San you Andreas. You haven't seen San Andreas? No. Nah. Oh, definitely watch it. That's like right it's up your alley. Yeah, I'm it, gonna watch it. It's like a Day After Tomorrow banger? Yeah. It's actually... I thought it was better than Day After Tomorrow. Oh, for... That's a bold statement. Day well, after I know you love that movie, but in yeah. my opinion, San Andreas was better than Day After Tomorrow. The Rock does a good job in it. The whole movie is just good. Like it is what it is. Like it's a, it that that movie is the equivalent of like junk food. Like it's not like you're not looking for like a high minded shit. You're just looking to be entertained. That shit is entertaining. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna give that a shot. Yeah. All right, guys, we love you. We'll talk to you soon. Much love. Peace.